says I set my heart to seek the Lord. Many, we don't hear that anymore. I set my I set my heart. Meaning I, 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 I force myself to say I need to seek God. I make up my mind to say I need to know God. Ask your neighbor, are you setting your heart to seek God? Or to seek the things of God? What does your neighbor say? God is a spirit. And whatever you get from God, he is interested in you more than what he wants to do for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Say neighbor. neighbor. God, is after God is after relationship. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. God, is God is after relationship. Are you willing to build your relationship with God? What does your neighbor say? Yes. Hello? Yes. You hear what the prophets of old say? I set my heart. Daniel was living in the palace. He says, I will not eat good food. Some of us, if you are living in the palace, fasting is the end. You said the last time I fasted was when I was poor. Yet men who understand something about this, hallelujah, that's why it's what we guard. You, you, when God gives you a gift, you protect it. You guard it. Hello? You? Above all else. Hello? Amen. Say neighbor. Amen. Say neighbor. neighbor. Set, your Set your heart to seek God. To, seek God. to, hunger, after to hunger after him. I'm not talking about playing church. You know playing church? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say neighbor. neighbor. There is still the next world that is coming. And how we live in this world determines how we are going to be in the next one. So the way you are living in this earth right now, are you preparing a place for your eternity? Ask your neighbor. David says in Psalm 51, Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. He also says, Create in me a clean heart. Hallelujah. David was willing to part with his entire kingdom for God to restore what people don't see. He says, restore unto me, hello, the joy of salvation. Create in me a clean heart, hello. Take not your Holy Spirit away from me. He was ready to say, riches can go, everything can go, but the Holy Spirit, no. And it's something that needs to be happening within everyone in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want God... And I'm trusting God to revive, hallelujah, to revive our hearts. A revival from within. If it is a pain that is bringing you to God, when God moves that pain, what is going to keep you with him? If it is sickness that is bringing you to God, when the sickness is healed, what is going to keep you there? If it is financial breakthrough that is bringing you to God, once God gives you breakthrough in finance, the thing that has brought you to him now, once that is moved, what will keep you in his presence? Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. What has brought you to the house of God? When God does it for you, what is going to still keep you with him? Hello? Hello? And if you cannot answer that question, it is a problem. Hello? Amen. Because if you say it's a pain, so I have a pain here. When I walk like this, there's a pain that is affecting me. When the pain is taken now, it's the pain that drove you to the presence of God. Now there's no pain. What will bring you to his presence again? Hello? Amen. Ask your neighbor. You say, I want a husband. When God has given you a husband, what will make you and your husband come to his presence? Amen. Say, I want a wife. When God has given you a wife, what will make you and your wife continue coming to his presence? Hello? Amen. Hello? Amen. What does your neighbor say? Uh, it can only be 
relationship. No relationship. That's why God is interested in people who want to build a relationship with him. That's why we can talk about the blessedness of David, the blessedness of Abraham, how all the people who worked with him were so blessed beyond measure, yet they had something we don't want to talk about, which is relationship. That when the relationship that David had with God was threatened because of a sin he committed, the Bible says he laid down seven days. Sit down. Seven days, not eating anything, not drinking anything, just on the floor, to say, I need to hear my God. Hello. Because riches can come, riches can go. Riches can be replaced. Friends can be replaced. But where will you find another God? <coughs> Say neighbor. neighbor. Let there be a hunger in you. To desire God. And the things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let there be a don't be religious. You know religious? The religious body hated Jesus. Those are the ones who wanted him crucified. The religious body. He, everything he did was an offense to them. Hallelujah. Amen. Yet, those who were, their hearts were set on knowing God. Those they were accepting him. So don't be religious. Even in your coming to church, don't come religiously. Hallelujah. Amen. Always be checking your heart. You know your heart? Or you know your phone? When your phone has no network, can you receive calls? No. Hmm? No. Ask your neighbor, your heart, is it receiving message? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Because God communicates with our heart. So it's one thing that we need to always be checking. How is my heart towards God? Hello. Yeah. So the only thing that will keep one fine is that their heart. Hmm? To always be seeking after God. Listen to what Jeremiah says. Listen to what Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 30 verse 21. Jeremiah 30 verse 21. Their nobles shall be from among them, and their governor shall come from their midst. Then I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach me, for who is this who pledged his heart to approach me? You hear God? He's asking, who is this one who has set his heart? Hello? To say, I want to know God. Hello? Amen. Ask your neighbor, have you set your heart to say, I want to approach him? Hmm? Have you set your heart to say, I want to approach him? Have you set your heart to say, I want to know him? You hear Jeremiah? God is asking, who is this that has set his heart? This is Jeremiah. He says, I've set my heart to seek the Lord. I have. Whether there's wind, there's no wind, I'm going to seek the Lord. That's what happens when you have set your heart. That's why when Elijah, the young man Elisha asked from Elijah, he says, you have asked the hard thing. Eh? Whether I'm feeling good, I'm feeling bad, my heart is set on seeking the Lord. Whether things are going my way, things are not going my way. My heart is set on seeking the Lord. Ask your neighbor, do you set your heart on seeking God? Or after today, you will set your heart on seeking him? Hello? Because at the end of the day, when all work will be tried by fire, everything will be tried by fire. Everything will be... <laughs> Every man's work, the Bible says it will be tried by fire. Because our God is a consuming fire. Amen. So whatever we are busy with, even in our personal life, even in our? Whatever we are busy with, it will come to be tried by fire. Ask your neighbor, are you ready for your works to be tried by fire if you are working? <laughs> Hello? To be tried by? The Bible says, seek first the kingdom and its righteousness. And all these things, hello? All these things. shall be added to you. So it is an error to desire the things with the same appetite you desire God. You cannot compare the maker of the universe. Hallelujah. Amen. The master of the universe, Hatsom Shimcha. 
You can't compare him. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't compare to the things you are seeking. That's why Matthew says, seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things. Say all. 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 all, all. Shall be added to you. Ask your neighbor, are you seeking the kingdom or you are seeking these things? Hello? Because it is an error. It is an error to limit God to a circumstance, to say, because today I'm not feeling well. I don't think God will love me. It's an error. Hello? The love of God is unchanging. It is not relying on circumstance. I may not feel well in my body. It's not a reflection on God. I don't feel well in my body. That is it. Hallelujah. Amen. So our hearts need to be longing. Hmm? Because the creator of the world is coming soon. The master of this world is coming. Jesus is coming in his glory. I told you the other day, I saw an army rising from the east. Hmm? I saw an army rising from the east. So Jesus is coming. And when he comes, he will not be what you are doing before men that will stand the test of time. It will be what you are doing before him. That's why we should drift away or move away from being public success and private failure. Ask your neighbor, are you a public success and a private failure or you are a private success and public success? Ask your neighbor, which one are you? <laughs> or which one do you desire to be? Let me not just say which, so that your neighbor doesn't lie today in the morning. Which one do you desire to be? What man makes, man destroys. What God makes stands the test of time. So which product do you want to be? Bible says when prophet Samuel anointed Saul, he anointed him with a flask. You know a flask? Something that is man-made. You know a flask? It's hot, it's cold. That's why even his relationship with God, hot, cold. Today, hallelujah, he's prophesying. Tomorrow is taking spear, wanting to pierce somebody. But when it came to David, the Bible says he took a ram's horn what was made by God. And the Bible says the things which are made by God, even when a shaking comes, they remain. But those that are not made by God, when a shaking comes, they move off. Which product do you want to be? Product of men or product of God? So set your heart. Set your heart to? To see God. Set your heart to see God. To say, I want to know him for myself. Hello. Amen. I want to experience him for my... Yes, As I'm learning in this house, I'm see I want to know God. I want to be this type of product that no challenge. Hallelujah. Amen. No hidden enemy. I was, we are going to pray today because the Lord was revealing some things to me. I told you the last time that a hidden enemy is more dangerous than a revealed enemy. Amen. Someone who comes and says, me, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fetish priest. At least that one has warned you. But the dangerous one is the one who looks like me and you. Who dresses like me and you and is just sitting down. But they are busy destroying in the background. That is a dangerous one. And that is the one that God will expose this season in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Say neighbor. neighbor. Every hidden enemy. Every whether, whether afar. Or near. The anointing shall expose it in the name of Jesus. Be it afar. Because when we give prophecy, people think prophecy, Bible says the word does not return. When we stood beginning of the year to say, this is what we are seeing. And I even mentioned, it, it, this is what's going to happen. It's already there. It's just waiting for fulfillment. So don't forget, hello? Don't forget the words. If this brother wants to harm me, hello, or he allows, because the brother cannot harm me. It's just that he, he partners with Satan temporarily. If he decides to partner with Satan to harm somebody, when you say, hey, I'm seeing a certain brother wearing a brown jacket, who is planning to harm, he will take off the brown jacket for that season. But it does not change the state of the heart to say the heart is still on a mission. So when prophecy is given, many people take it lightly. That's why there are many people we tell them to say, brother or sister, be careful of this. Hallelujah. Amen. 
after we pray for them and they go home, they think it's over. The enemy is more dangerous on the comeback than the initial attack. More dangerous on the? You know, come back. You fight, mm -mm -mm, you defeat him. When now he comes back, now he has studied now. He has? He saw that, oh, this is how they fight. This is how they do. This is how they are going to do. So when he comes now on the comeback, it's no longer just an attack abruptly. It's now planned. It's now calculated. It's now more subtle. We are going to pray today. Yeah. Say neighbor. Yeah. We are going to pray. The Bible says our God is a consuming fire. Anything that wants to be a stumbling block to whatever God wants to do in your life, anything that wants to be a stumbling block for, with whatever God wants to do for you, anything that wants to be a stumbling block in any kingdom. One time the disciples of Jesus, they were, they were having, looking, they wanted them to pay tax. They didn't even have money because there was a hidden enemy busy chopping the money. And Jesus said, go to the sea and you will find a fish. Fish don't produce money. Meaning there must have been storehouses of wickedness under the water where treasures of people were kept. Hmm? Hello. Amen. You know there are storehouses that keep blessing. Storehouses that keep, maybe your property, you dreamt about it. Have you seen it? It might be kept. So today we are going to pray. Shake your neighbor a bit. Say neighbor. Amen. Today we are going to pray. Because we are... We are not religious people. I want to pray today. Thank you for listening to this message. This message is also available on DVD at the Heaven International Fellowship Bookshop. Our address is Plot 242 Mayton Road in Didier, Val, next to New Hope Secondary School in Johannesburg, South Africa. For more information, contact 010-035-1088 or you can email us on info at heavenif.co.za Follow us on social media. On Facebook, we are Heaven International Fellowship. On Instagram, search at Prophet SP Heaven. For our live video updates, find us on YouTube search Prophet Samuel Paul Heaven. Keep watching Heaven International Fellowship with Prophet Samuel Paul Heaven. Keep watching Heaven International Fellowship with Prophet Samuel Paul Heaven.